Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, please be seated. Welcome to our regular regular meeting of council for Monday, December the 11th, uh, 2017 in City Hall Council Chambers. I'd like to call this meeting to order and recognize that we are doing a business today on the traditional territory of the Hupetchesit and Sashat First Nation. Uh, and also like to welcome back our uh, city clerk from her you know, holiday in the east. Uh, councilors, any late items? And City Clerk, I believe we have a late item. Uh, one late item, Mr. Mayor, it's under F7.1, a report from the Economic Development Manager. Thank you. Uh, a motion to uh, that the, adopt the agenda as, uh, as adjusted uh, would be in order? I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Council, we have Minutes, uh, the special meeting held at 4.45 p.m. Um, and the regular council meeting held at 7 p.m. on November 27th, as well as an organizational meeting held on December 4th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Motion to adopt those minutes, please. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Uh, brings us council then to the public input period. It's an opportunity for the public to address council on topics of relevance to City Council, a maximum of four speakers for no more than three minutes each will be accommodated. Yes, uh, please come forward. And even though we know who you are, please uh, state your name and address uh, for the record. I would like to thank the uh, Mayor and Council for their initiative in inviting the uh, public uh, forest land companies to uh, make an address to the council and to explain their um, access policy. And I'm very disappointed they didn't take advantage of that opportunity because I know it's something that interests a great many people here. Uh, we haven't had an overall view of, of how they intend to manage access. We just get um, accounts of them um, making uh, ma uh, approaching various um, uh, uh, recreational organizations and uh, in some cases making contracts for the use of, so that they can use their key and these are from what I've heard you know rather expensive uh, $2,000 a year or so and and, and uh, $500 um, deposit for the key it's not the sort of thing that the individual or small clubs can can uh, cope with and it's mostly individuals are the people that use the, our um, backcountry for recreation for, you know, or families going out for snow um, um, sledding in the winter or fishing or camping or um, swimming in the lakes in the summer. And we have three parks and four recreation areas that bring tourists to the area. Um, the, you know, the Strathcona Park and, and uh, Mount Arrowsmith are known all over the island and they bring people from even, f even further afield and it's no good if, if uh, tourists are going to get um, accidentally shut behind gates. It's, it's no good for anybody. So I, I um, support your efforts in finding more about what these policies are going to be and um, um, yeah, thanks very much, and, and we appreciate the effort. Just a quick response. So we'll continue to, uh, to connect with uh, Island Timber and Timber West and find out uh, how we can get that information to the public. Uh, but thank you for your comments, Judy. Okay. Okay, anybody, uh, anybody else wish to address council? All right, seeing none, then uh, we will move on to our uh, delegations. And the first one is John Maba uh, from Cycle Alberni. Welcome, John. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. It's a great pleasure to be here tonight, and I'm, I'm really sorry I wasn't here a few weeks ago when you had your meeting of the whole. I was out in Montreal visiting my son. That was why we planned it. And his family. Yeah, but I did go online, and I watched the, I watched the meeting on YouTube. 
and uh, it's it's neat to be able to do that even if you miss the meeting. But um, um, so I was I was very very pleased to see the outcome of that, and um, I'm very I'm very happy with the um, the direction that that you are taking as a city council for Port Alberni in uh, going ahead. Uh, with the proposal to do uh, protected bike lanes on Stamp Avenue. And um, my friend Charles Thomas and I, who are both on Cycle Alberni, we, we had a meeting with uh, the, the city planner, Scott, um, and uh, this morning, and it was, it was a very good meeting, and uh, he informed us, you know, as to specifically what is being looked at. And uh, he had the maps out and, you know, Google Earth and everything like that. So we saw specifically what's being planned. And we gave him a little bit of input. And I think he's going to be considering some comments that we made uh, that might, might even simplify things a little bit for him. Um, I guess one of, the, one of the concerns, and I hope, I hope it'll be okay if I, if I share some of the things that were said at that meeting, uh, this morning, um, he does. He apparently has been tasked to come up with um, some costing and some plans as to how that could go ahead. And um, he shared with us that there there are some concerns about whether the entire project is whether there's going to be enough money to go ahead with it. And uh, so we we kind of said, well, you know, we hope that we can do as much as we can with the money we've got, and and kind of call that a first stage. Um, I, I guess my my uh, input. I'd like to add to that a little bit the um, the perspective of of a number of people that I've consulted with on Cycle Alberni, basically our committee, and that is that um, that there there actually is a, a, a cost effective way of getting this done. I think, and um, that it it refers um, specifically to I believe what was presented as option three. And, and so what, what the plan was there in option three, I believe, was to, uh, to uh, take one of the lanes of traffic, and might I say, as I, as I talk about taking a lane of traffic, um, as I've, you know, it's kind of my personal opinion that we have some of the widest streets of any community that I've ever seen in, you know, in all my travels. And um, it, it seems like we don't really need to add any more pavement to our community for, for bike lanes right now. Um, but, but what option three suggested was that by taking one of the lanes of traffic, we could then have enough room to have bike lanes on both sides of Stamp Avenue. And it would be mostly a matter of repainting lanes. I mean, we, we might have to do a little bit of work uh, up on um, Roger Street between Victoria Key and Stamp, you know, to um, to put in a lane behind the curb for part of that. But um, but other than that, it's it's a question of you know just realigning the lanes and making room for the bikes on both sides, and and then putting up bollards or or some other protective barrier in between the traffic. And um, you know, it seems like. You know that would be the most co cost-effective way to do it. However, um, if we were to go ahead, as as Scott is suggesting, and do the west side of Stamp Avenue first, as as you've asked him to to do, and then and then look at how much money we've got left after we've we've done that part, and then you know if if there seems to be just enough maybe to um, um, to change the lanes and put the lane on the east side actually on the road and and there would be probably one less lane for cars there'd still be two two going one way and one going another way for part of the distance and and the rest of it it could could actually remain unchanged because of those those medians in the middle john john yeah. i'm just going to interrupt yeah. you here um it's sort of Yep. going in a different number of directions. But yep. just to clarify, yep. what came from council was that we asked that both proposals be costed out. We didn't mm -hmm. give any direction other than that. We just okay. made sure we saw we, mm -hmm. we got the maximum amount of information before we mm -hmm. made a final decision. Okay. So we were looking at, 
at mm -hmm. primarily east side. There was a proposal to look at the west side. We mm -hmm. didn't feel that we had enough information as council mm -hmm. to fully weigh the the options. Mm -hmm. So that's what we re requested. Okay. We didn't. Okay. We definitely didn't consider yeah. uh, as part of that that motion. Mm -hmm that we would eliminate lanes of traffic or anything mm -hmm. like that. That wasn't in the consideration at the time. We were looking, what's the costing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, well that, and, and I, I guess I, I have to kind of apologize because maybe I didn't gather all that because I was away and, you know, the, you got know. lost in the translation. When yeah. We were back east, of, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I guess, I guess the bottom line is that it, it seems to me that the, you know, the best way to complete the, the project in kind of one fell swoop and probably with very close to within budget would be to put both those bike lanes on Stamp Avenue and make some changes in the in the automobile lanes. But anyway, that's just, you know, something to consider. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly be following the, you know, the process as it goes along and and uh, give give some input. Anyway, thank okay. you very much. Yeah. Thanks, John. Appreciate your time. Okay. Okay, Council, our, uh, our next delegation is from Lieutenant uh, Carson Stoney, Commanding Officer of RSCC Alberni, Canadian Armed Forces. So, uh, Lieutenant uh, Stoney. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, the rest of the councillors for having us here this evening. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Lieutenant Carson Stoney. I'm the, the brand new commanding officer for the Port Alberni Sea Cadets. Uh, this evening, I have some of my senior cadets that, have, that are very active and engaged in our community, and I uh, would like to talk about the importance of the cadet program and, uh, and some of their activities that they've uh, accomplished. Good evening. I am Petty Officer Second Class Megan Boudreau. The cadet program is important in Port Alberni because it gives us youth a lot of great experiences that will help us out in the future. C the cadet program is focused on teaching youth life skills, being active in our communities, and the importance of physical fitness and healthy lifestyle. In cadets, you learn how to be a leader and also how to work with others. Cadets in Port Alberni can be hopefully inspire other kids to do great things. Cadets in, is important to me because it has made me grow as a person. I have grown in my leadership skills, communication skills, and public speaking, and more. I've been given experiences I've never thought I would have. Last month, I was selected to participate for a week-long training exercise aboard a Royal Canadian Navy patrol craft vessel. I met other youth from across BC, and we worked together to run the ship through different drills, like firefighting, steering breakdown, and many man overboard dr drills in beautiful, remote coastal waters around Vancouver Island. Not only does the cadet program offer fantastic training and once-in-a-lifetime experiences, it pays us to go and do these things. Cadets is free for all youth in Canada, and we all have earned high school credits too. Cadets has changed who I am and has made me stronger, confident leader. Now I am a senior cadet. I look forward to being a role model and having an opportunity to help the same positive changes in my junior cadets. Good evening, City Council. I am Petty Officer First Class Campbell. Cadets has provided me with many wonderful opportunities. This year alone, I've swung off a tall ship into the freezing Pacific waters, rode on the frozen Arctic Ocean on a sled pulled by dogs in the Arctic Circle, and watched the sunrise as a backdrop to whales breaching on the Atlantic Ocean. This program has taken me more places and given me more opportunities I never dreamed possible, and I'm so thankful for it. What other teenagers get their boating license before their driver's license? Or can say they've manned a 70-meter pirate ship from the Netherlands all before turning 16. One of the most rewarding highlights of my year was watching my junior cadets develop a deep appreciation for a culture I hold dear to my heart during our national exchange to Naui at Nunavut. Without cadets, I might not have learned the traditional Inuit drum dance or have gone to try cross-country cross skiing across the frozen sea ice, which is definitely not as easy as it looks. 
The cadet program is an amazing program that benefits countless youth in this community. Thank you. Hello, City Council. My name is Chief Petty Officer Second Class Daniel Cochran. I'm the Chief of Training for the Sea Cadets in Port Alberni. I, was a, I joined cadets when I was 12 years old. I was very timid and shy. I was terrified of meeting new people, petrified of being on the water, and overall just scared of doing new things. As I progressed in the cadet program, I was able to make new friends. I took classes on being a leader and looking out for the cadets I was put in charge of. I've always had the support of my shipmates, and from these things, I've been able to conquer my fears. Now that I have completed all of my training, the cadet program hired me last summer to run a division of our basic training cadets. These are cadets that are 12 years old from all across Canada, and most likely their first time away from home. I was so proud to be able to help these cadets as I knew full well what it was like to be scared, timid 12-year-old, and I know how much our program can make a difference. As for the fear of water, I currently have my Canadian Yachting Sail Level 2, and after I graduate, I'm applying to be a Naval Communicator with the Royal Canadian Navy. In closing, I'd just like to let City Council know of uh, a couple major milestones that are occurring uh, this year. The Sea Cadet Program nationally will be celebrating its 100-year uh, centennial, and so you'll certainly be seeing uh, some details coming up in uh, this upcoming year. As well, locally, the Royal Canadian Sea Cadet Corps Alberni in the Port Alberni Valley is celebrating 70 years of being in the valley and developing youth. Um, and as such, to commemorate these celebrations, I'll be sending your office a letter uh, requesting an official proclamation for uh, the Alberni Sea Cadet Week, hopefully next fall. Uh, and also, uh, another presentation I'd like to do this evening is uh, in the military side of things, we have uh, sort of a, a tradition for esprit de corps, ship morale, etc. cetera. Um, and there's a gift that, uh, that, we, that we give others to prove that they've had that experience or had that background. And so if you don't mind, Your Worship, I can make a little presentation to you. No, <laughs> it does the buzz or spark, no, but that's the, uh, that is a, a, an actual sea cadet coin that has the, uh, the sea cadet heads in the elbow on it. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And yeah. that, was, that was the secret handshake, by the way. That was the secret handshake. <laughs> that's, that's all. That's all. Yeah, one of those. I'm pass it around. Um, I do have a quick question. Please. The three young people who are with you, mm -hmm. the, are you all petty officers? I'm a chief. You're a chief. Are you from, are all three of you from Vancouver Island? Or any of you from Port Alberta? You're <laughs> Daniel, you're from Port Alberta. Oh. Okay, and what grade are you in right now? Twelve. Oh. Well, this is great. You make us proud. I'm sure Council has questions. <laughs> Councilor, uh, so good. Thank you very much for the presentation. I'm very impressed. Um, one question I had because I attended a lot of award ceremony and your yearly uh, marching ceremonies here locally in Port Alberni and I always hear echo from parents in the community that said there's nothing for our youth but I attend these ceremonies and I don't see many uh, cadets uh, being involved uh, which to me is very surprising. So is there any recruitment process of working with the city, maybe through the parts and rec uh, program to at least have posters so these parents could actually be educated as into where they could apply for their children and so forth? Uh, certainly, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, myself, I, I live in Nanaimo and I drive out twice a week to, to, run, to run our activities. Um, uh, this is a, certainly a learning year for me as I've, I've taken over as CEO. I've been part of the Canadian Armed Forces for 12 years and I've never been a CEO of a unit. So um, this is, uh, I'm learning all sorts of things like there's a, a fall fair parade that I'm starting a, a marching band in, in January and hopefully next fall we will be able to have a marching band in that parade. So um, I'm, I'm making connections with the, uh, hopefully with the city to, we have lots of promotional items to, to put up. And uh, currently we have approximately 50 cadets registered uh, through the three cadet programs that are in, that are in Port Alberni and we're, we're really trying hard to make that number grow. Thank you. Councillor Paulson? I'm uh, not sure which cadet it was, but uh, somebody said they had the opportunity to be on a tall ship. 
Was that the Oriole by any chance? Um, no, I was on two tall ships this year, and I actually sailed with the Oriole yep. um, over in Quebec this summer. I didn't get a chance to go on it, but we were racing alongside it. That's great. I had the opportunity the last tall ships event to sail from Port Alberni to Banfield with the Oriole, and it was the experience of a lifetime. It was incredible. Yeah, it's a beautiful ship. Good for you guys. Anything else, Council? So, you also spoke about being in Nunavut. So, what an incredible experience to, uh, to have that opportunity. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an amazing experience. Having our whole Sea Cadet Corps fly across the country, go up to Nunavut for a couple weeks, and just experience a culture that's not like anywhere else. And it's really eye-opening, and yeah, it was amazing. So, Daniel, you said that when, before you went into the Sea Cadets, you were um, quite shy. Yes. I basically didn't do anything with, I only went to school, came home, did my homework, and then read a book. So, uh, what, what persuaded you? What made you think that you'd like to do that? What persuaded me was my dad. He was in Air Cadets. So he, first he took me to scouts, which I didn't want to get out of my car for. <laughs> and then he took me to sea cadets and I got right out. I went inside and I'm like, bye dad, he's gone. So sea cadets have opened my eyes and my social life. We've had lots of great experiences for sure. So thank you. Anything, anything else, Council? Yeah, no, you've overcome your shyness tonight. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. <clears throat> Okay, well, thank you uh, so much on behalf of Council. Uh, it was a great presentation. Thank you very Thanks. much. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Okay. Okay, Council, that uh, brings us to our next item, which is the unfinished business. Uh, the uh, first uh, piece of unfinished business uh, is the reconsideration of the date for the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, we had a, we have a verbal report, I believe, from the CAO about uh, about what happened. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, you, you caught me um, having a different conversation. All right, you so you're, you're going to talk about is it December 18th or December 19th? Mr. Mayor, at the last um, meeting of council, there was uh, a motion passed to conduct a committee of the whole, um, the next committee of the whole meeting on December 18th. Uh, subsequent to that, at, at that vote, it was it was apparent that at least two members of council would not be able to attend on the 18th. Subsequent to that, um, staff has worked with council to find a date where all of council could be there for that important discussion, and um, we found a date. And if council would like to make a motion to reschedule that meeting, then that would be appropriate. You prepared to share with us what that magic date is that you uh, found? I'm hoping it's December 19th. All right, thank you, uh, Councillor McClemon. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I did initially make the motion 18th or a day that works better or some such wording, but that'll be fine. Uh, I, I would move that we, Council of the City of Port Alberni, holds a uh, committee of the whole meeting on December the 19th to discuss the uh, issues of the uptown problems and uh, the livability of, of the, the Alberni Valley. And, uh, and in this motion, I'd like to add that we invite our bylaw officer, the RCMP OIC, and the uh, um, economic development manager. Okay, is there a seconder for that motion? Well, I'll second it. Um, I'd just like to see the managers there, especially for the committee of a whole meeting, so if he wants to... Okay. No problem <coughs> everyone being there, but I think specifically yeah. because of the subject matter, those individuals should be specifically invited, that's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Washington and then uh, Councillor Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd also like to add that we start the meeting at 6 p.m. so that the merchants uptown have a chance to close up shop and come down because they're the eyes on third avenue that are there eight hours a day we're up there for a few minutes and of course the rcmp can't be up there for long periods of time so uh they're the eyes that have to come down here and tell us what's going on up there so as long as we got it at 6 p.m and uh like councillor Silve said the director of development services there um i'm good 
Okay, uh, Councillor Minions. Thank you, and I'm sure staff is already aware, but um, not that we need to add it to the motion, but we want to also make sure we invite um, ACAUSE, Mental Health, and um, Shelter Society, ABCSI. There are many. Let's get everybody here, um, not just staff, but, but everybody here yeah, who's uh, yeah, involved. I would agree. But we can leave that up to staff to make, yeah. put out those invitations. That was already done at the original yeah. recommendation. So. Yep, Councillor uh, Sobey. One concern I have, and I agree with Councillor Minions about having uh, many stakeholders involved in this, is that maybe City Council room here is not the venue to hold that, but I'll leave up to staff to decide that. Okay. Mr. Mayor, it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, this room is small for a large group, but it, uh, this is the room where we're, we're uh, able to broadcast live, live streaming, and um, that is valuable. A lot of people watch us online. So it's, a, it's always a trade-off considering a different venue where we may not be able to broadcast. Okay, well, pretty much come early then, try and get a seat. It's also uh, important uh, to have a record of what people say, so uh, yeah, you're right, it's a trade-off. Okay, anything else? On the motion to uh, change the date from the 18th to the 19th, all those in favor? Carries. There we go, and uh, next item, council, is uh, from the Albany Valley Heritage Commission. Um, Director of Parks and Recreation, I believe, is going to make a comment. Thank you. So just to provide an update uh, from the last meeting, I was able to meet with the commission on November 29, and some of the, those uh, commission members are here in attendance this evening, and I just wanted to say publicly thank you for pulling such a large uh, number of members together in such short order. Um, I, I think it's very apparent uh, when I met with the commission that uh, we've collectively failed uh, that commission, and it was clear to me that, that I can tell the commission clearly wants to be empowered and we haven't engaged them uh, well up to this point. So I think it's time that we reevaluate our want for a commission and move forward accordingly. So um, in the event that council doesn't wish to engage the commission, they, the commission has made it clear that they're just as, as soon would dissolve uh, the commission if they're not going to be engaged. So. I think that if we are going to retain the commission, I think it's a critical that we engage uh, the commission before bringing items to council, much like, like we would for the advisory planning commission. Um, so my first question would be uh, seeking direction from council on that you, you wish or not to move forward with a, a heritage commission. Um, I can speak on behalf of council, perhaps. I'll certainly speak uh, on this topic and uh, there's no reason at this point not to engage the commission as it's there for a purpose and until we replace it with something else I believe it's it would be appropriate for us to to engage it we have certainly haven't uh, in any way decided that we want to set it aside at this point we've certainly established a direction that we want to go in terms of arts culture heritage but we're not there yet we haven't made any de any decisions and you haven't completed your work yet so until we get there, um, unless you're telling me that magically, telling us that magically you've got all this work done, good for you, amazing. <laughs> uh, no, we need that, that commission and uh, we have a representative on that commission and, and uh, it's Councillor Washington. Sure, absolutely. And so, uh, so with that, uh, to that end as far as get it, getting that work done, um, I'd like to get a, get a gauge before I, I wrap up this evening about what sort of things we'd like that commission to be involved in. So we're all on the same page about how those folks can expect to be engaged. And then that way I can, um, I can also help, help hold the department to task as well to ensure that, like I say, with advisory planning uh, commission as well as folks like the Community Investment Program Committee, we're ensuring we're engaging everyone fully. Um, if the city clerk would be able to pull up the bylaw there, I just wanted to touch base about a couple of things. So on page four of the bylaw, um, it's got listed there uh, the duties of the commission. And so I just wanted to walk through and, and confirm that these are the types of things that, that council would like to see commission engaged in or if there would be other items in its place. Um, again, just to ensure we're on the same page moving forward so that uh, we can be as efficient as we can with work. Like 
Councillor Alamani. Just to just to start, I guess I think what what jumps out at me is, um, and I think what a lot of the concern has been is is the relationship between the commission and the McLean Mill Society, uh, and if there is a relationship between the McLean Mill Society and, and the commission. Um, I I would be. Uh, you know, and, and it's only my opinion. I, I don't know what the rest of council thinks. Um, at this point, you know, if, if we're going to treat the commission as, as we would other committees, as we would the planning commission, then, um, you know, setting up a, a, a system where the McLean Mill Society can bring forward what they're, what they're doing at the mill um, and, and the train and all of that um, to the commission, um, then they should, they should be able to do that and should be expected to do that and and be able to have the commission provide input um that's just what what jumps out at me from that. i still see uh mclean mill is a national historic site so you know we've set up the <coughs> mclean mill society to operate that but there's a whole other aspect to much of that site and that is the national historic component of it so I, I don't see that, that 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 role has ended for the for our our heritage commission. Agreed. I think just when we look at, uh, for instance, under under subset B, their advice council with respect to any and all heritage issues. I think uh, I would agree with Councillor Alamani around the idea that just ensuring that we're we're keeping those lines of communication open and potentially how that information flows to ensure that we are going through correct channels just as we would with the other commission. So I don't think it's necessarily so much that one would replace the other or one would dissolve, just ensuring that when those members are engaged that we are honoring them by ensuring that we, we aren't making decisions without their, them first being consulted. Okay, uh, Councillor McClellan. Yeah, um, I, I guess that's the one that jumped out at me as well. Since this was put in and you know the Heritage Commission been around a long time and I sat on it representing the city for a lot of years and really it was mostly reporting what was happening in different areas and then we all went home so now they, they want to re reconnect and that's probably a very good thing however the McLean Mill Society has been mandated by council uh, financially uh, looking after budgets and things like that so there would have to be a different relationship in the bar. We'd have to change the bylaw, possibly, although I don't know that, um, so that there is an interaction between them, which I believe there is, but I'm not 100% sure. And, and at the same time, being able to do what council wanted to make sure that, A, we got a, a good thing, and B, uh, it's, it's not going to run, run away on, on a dollar sign. So that was the two things that, that we set up and they're a creature of us and and we got to be cautious with that that's all agreed and i think that's where uh this is uh i'm happy to look at refreshing the bylaw in terms of of engagement all the rest of it and i think to your point councillor mcclemon under subsection a there where it talks about advice on policy advise on policies and objectives relating to the museum and the McLean Mill National Historic Site. So that's where I'm, again, I'm just looking for some clarity from council to be able to, again, I'm, I'm the new, new face. I want to ensure that I'm being respectful to process both from council and also how we engage our commission. So ensuring that we're all clear about this is where those lines in the sand are. So we know that if, uh, if the McLean Mill is bringing some report forward, it's, you know, we're, we're ensuring we're engaging folks properly as well as meeting the mandate of council. Um, Councillor Sobe? The understanding and the importance for me is that anything related to the heritage of the Alberni Valley, that I would like it to see it through the Commission. It's simple as that. Uh, that's my opinion only. Uh, as for the McLean's Mill, uh, you know, I understand, it. you know, they have the aspects of they having an operational budget and so forth, and they're dealing with the function of the McLean's Mill. But when it comes to their heritage and possibly the arts and all that, is that I would like to see a body of the commission to be in, in stable there and be able to use as advisement for council. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Minions. 
Thank you. And it just since we're talking about McLean Mill, <laughs> um, I, I think I'm curious how um, operationally this would change the flow of work for um, McLean Mill Society. They do have um, Dr. Morton, who sits as an advisor on their board, um, so they are connected um, to Heritage directly in that way. Um, do they have a representation? Do they have representation on the Heritage Commission or? Um, like I, I just am not really understanding specifically how this would change um, processes for what they do. And I think that's a great point. And and to tie in, for instance, with the Alberni Valley Museum, also has uh, has a fixed budget that happens to live within the parks, recreation and heritage budget, and we still. Uh, will engage council or commissions or whatever the case might be. So I don't know that it will necessarily change um, operating processes. I think it's more a case of the consultation piece and ensuring that, again, the lines of communication are open, that the Heritage Commission, much like staff, have the opportunity to, to weigh in before anything comes before council. So um, decisions are, are not made exclusive of the commission having the opportunity to weigh in, whatever those those might be operationally or in an advisory capacity. Uh, Councillor Paulson? I'm just kind of spitballing here, but I'm wondering if uh, the McLean Mill National Historic Site should actually come out of A, and McLean Mill National Historic Site should have a subsection of its own so it clarifies its roles now that it's governed by the society and the clear lines of communication, um, how, they would, how that would flesh out. I, like I say, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I'm just kind of throwing some ideas out here. Okay. Um, Councillor Washington, I'm just uh, curious if you have any thoughts on this, given that you've spent three years sitting on that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think it's fine the way it is because we want to deal with the site itself. We don't want to deal with the business end of it that they have their executive director engaged in. Mm -hmm. um, it's been unfortunate that they there's been conflict in meetings so they cannot attend our, our monthly meeting uh, but uh, no I, I want I want the McLean Mill National Historic Site the Vancouver Island Industrial Heritage Community I want everybody to get along so that we can sit as a group and advise rather than you know oh they're not here she's not here they're not there we're not here and like the Councilor McClellan says you know they do we do do reports but having said that, it's also, I find, like say the Industrial Heritage Society report very valuable to what's going on in the valley and, and to, for us to all link up together so that we are not going off and having an event here and an event here where we can mesh together and work together, I think that's huge. I, that's, that's the point I think we're trying to get across is, is to mesh the Heritage Network together. We don't want to worry about their gift shop or their... <coughs> Their, their restaurant, we want to worry about the stuff down below. We want to worry about the trucks. We want to worry about, you know, what we can bring from Industrial Heritage Society down there to enhance the site. So are you saying we have this basic responsibility in order to maintain it as a National Historic Site? Is that what you're talking about? That's what I, that's my belief is that we have to do that. Um, again, I don't want, we don't want to have to worry about my perspective, but as a, as a, the commission we don't want to worry about the financial what they're doing at the front of the mill we want to worry about what's going on at the back of the mill right okay i think i got you councillor uh, soviet and councillor mcclemon and just to stay under the umbrella of having open communication because i think that's what we've been lacking for so many years is that you know i would even consider putting a proposal to having a member from the mclean mill society on the board with the heritage society if that is not done already and that way there won't be any miscommunication and all that. Everybody's going to have their own bylaws to respect, and this so be it. Thanks. Councillor McClellan? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, echo what Councillor Polson said. Uh, I think that's a good idea. I hadn't really thought of taking something out and putting something somewhere else, but we have, in this instance, created a different situation, and really there, you can't really divide the front from the back uh, of of the McLean Mill site because what happens you got to arrange things and and so it's all got to be done together so uh, I think the heritage part is being handled now with Jamie but 
at the same time, I can see where the Heritage Commission would like to maybe have a little bit of input or some kind of advice to give, and that, that's probably good. So it would probably be good to, um, like I said earlier, rewrite this in some way, and maybe the way Councillor Polson suggested might be the best way to do it. But not this evening. Okay, so um, I, I'm not sure if, if Director Thorpe, if all of that helps you with where you want to go, or if it just muddies <laughs> the, the waters a little bit more. Um, Again, I think I, I could use some more clarity just so that we're, we're all clear because we have gone down the, the road where we haven't engaged to the extent that it's, I think that the duties of the commission are very clearly outlined in the bylaw and I think that we failed to, to follow those duties. And so I think it's a, a good time at this crossroads to, to make the decision if, if, we're, if council wishes to move forward, excellent. And again, just getting crystal clear so that we're all able to commit to whatever those duties might be where we'll, we're able to follow them through in any, in any circumstance. So I think it is clear from the perspective of council that we want to maintain those duties. It's just that we want to just clarify that little change in role between now that we have a McLean's Mill Society set up. So maybe, I don't know whether it'd be a subsection or a whole new, uh, uh, a, a whole new section. So it'd be A, B, C, and D, I'm not sure. Okay. But that may be something you want to turn your mind to and yeah, absolutely. If that's if that's council's wish us. to look at sort of carving out the operation of the McLean Mill Society, I'm happy to to take this document away, uh, sort of regenerate a, a draft or, or refresh and bring it back to to council. Come back to us with a proposal, okay. just to make sure it reflects that. But we in no way do we want to at this point want to uh, do away with the Heritage Commission. It's important for us and uh, as a city, and because we have a lot of heritage assets and heritage parts of the city and surrounding areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Councillor uh, Paulson, do you want to move uh, to a motion to accept the verbal report? I move to accept the verbal report from the um, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Heritage. I'll second that, Mr. All those in favor? Yep. Um, could we perhaps add to that that we also direct staff to um, revise the heritage bylaw based on the on the conversation? All right. And direct staff to. Um, Revise uh, the um, the bylaw. What she said. Yeah, what she said. Yeah, <laughs> Word, wordsmithing. It's called wordsmithing. Okay, uh, Councillor Sobey, were you seconding that? Yes. All right. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, Council, that moves us to uh, brings us to staff reports. First the report is on accounts. Uh, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the certification of the Director of Finance dated December 11, 2017 be received and checks numbering 140240 to 140355 inclusive in payments of accounts totaling $800,357.70 be approved. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And from City Clerk, we, from the City Clerk, we have a report on uh, tag days, uh, including a chart of proposed tag days. Um, Council wish any clarification on any of those? Then Councilor Minions, do you want to move receipt of that? That Council for the City of Port Alberni approved the 2018 tag day allocations outlined in the report from the City Clerk on, dated December 11, 2017. Seconder? All those in favor? Carried. And from the uh, Director of Finance, the Audit Committee, uh, we have some minutes that we need to look at, uh, uh, need to receive. Councillor Sobe, do you want to move that receipt of those? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That the minutes from November 27, 2017 Audit Committee, the responses to questions arising from the meeting dated November 28, 2017, the quarterly analysis of mayor and council travel and convention expenses expenses ending September 30th 2017 the financial statements ending September 30th 2017 and the vendors check registry register uh, report ending November 20th 2017 be received is there a seconder for this motion second mr. mayor any discussion councillor McClemon yeah just um 
I'm looking at the council expenses and that, and I, I don't mind uh, saving money for the city, but I, that doesn't look look quite right when I, I, we all went to the same convention, and uh, I just don't, I don't mind it if you didn't charge me for anything, but uh, it just looks like it maybe should be more balanced out, that's all. Um, you need more supervision when you're doing your expense I, I, are you wondering why you were 8,000 and the rest of us were only 700? 400, <laughs> I didn't charge for meals, so I have no idea. But I'm no, I'm just kidding. I just uh, I know that some of us were there for different uh, lengths of time, so that maybe. Okay. So that would be coming officially from the audit committee then? Okay. Just, uh, can you, sorry, uh, can you speak up? Yeah, I'm just saying it is that it, it's when the accounts are coming in and the vendor's checks are coming in at a certain time and everybody is being paid for their travel expenses and all that, or not going in on the same certain date of the month. So I could see that it's, it will reflect in the next report of a more accurate numbers of what's been spent. Okay, on the motion to receive this, all those in favor? Carried. Um, and from the Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage, uh, request for early budget re approval for the uh, multiplex chiller. Um, this report dated uh, December the 11th. They're requesting an early budget approval of $175,000 for the replacement of the multiplex ice plant chiller, which comprised of funding from Parks, Recreation, and Heritage General Fund, of $50,000 in the Carbon Trust Fund of $125,000. Um, Director Thorpe, I, I need to ask you a question. And I, it's possible others on council will ask. Yes, sir. Could you please just remind me, um, I'm sure it's been explained before, but how does the $125,000 fit into the criteria for the Carbon Trust Fund? Based on the increased efficiency of the new unit. So the, uh, the amount, the draw of ammonia and the, char the ammonia charge in the unit will be far decreased than what it is currently in the current original chiller, therefore it is eligible for carbon trust. So it reduces our carbon footprint, is that what happens? I believe, yes. And this becomes a city asset? Uh, yes, it would be. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Council? All right, then Councillor Alamani, do you want to move that motion? Thank you for asking the question, because I had the same one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that Council for the City of Port Alberni approved the request for early budget approval of $175,000 for replacement of the multiplex ice plant chiller comprised of funding from the Parks and Recreation and Heritage General Fund, $50,000, and Carbon Trust Fund, $125,000. Is there a second? second that, Mr. Mayor. I guess if I could make a comment. Yeah. After 17 years, um, you know, there's going to be retrofits in that building, and each one of these retrofits is going to make that building more... Um, oh, sorry. sorry. Each one of those retrofits is going to make that building more energy efficient and, and cleaner, and uh, I know we've made some changes in the lighting, some changes in the back end there that, that have made significant differences. So uh, thank you. All right, Councilor McClemon. Yeah, just curious, is, is there only one place we can buy this? Do you have bids and so we know that this is the amount of money? Uh, we, we have on good source that, that we are, uh, are in the ballpark, absolutely, with this number that's uh, been proposed. We have not gone to the formal RFP process. We are primed and ready when council uh, approves, uh, approves the spending. So I, I gather from the background information for this that um, we have a limited window of opportunity to do this. That's why this request for early approval. Um, can you foresee any other requests coming for early approval or is that a question I should direct to the CAO? Uh, from Parks, Recreation and Heritage, no, I don't expect it. However, the CAO can comment. Okay, so let's <laughs> have the CAO comment on that. Mr. Mayor, it's good to know the Parks, Rec and Heritage won't have any more. We, we have that on record <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, but I, I do expect, uh, Mr. Mayor, that there will be other uh, requests for early approval. And uh, we're working on bringing those together and having 
one discussion at one time on those um, in the new year sometime. That would certainly f- satisfy me a lot more because I'm a little concerned about, you know, just uh, this jackrabbit approach to uh, request for early approval. I, I agree, Mr. Mayor. The only reason this one's not part of that greater um, bundle is that there, we have a window of opportunity for construction that we need to get on this now in order to minimize the service disruption. Okay, thank you. Councillor McClemon, did you, did you have a question? No, I guess if we'd done the budget quicker, we might not need it the earlier. <laughs> okay. I said it before. You have. <laughs> on, those mo- on the motion, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you, uh, Director Thorpe. And uh, from the CEO, uh, the Albany District Fall Fair, we have a report dated December 1st, uh, responding to a letter uh, from the Albany District Fall Fair requesting that city consider, reconsider the eviction of Albany paving from city-owned land. CAO? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the, <clears throat> excuse me, the city has received a letter from the Albany District Fall Fair Association, which uh, council has not yet received. Um, and uh, because we received it in time for us to prepare a report for council, we brought that report and the letter to you at the same time. So um, some background to this, we have a land use um, challenge on city lands that the city, um, it appears the city had a hand in creating. Um, Alberni Paving is uh, a tenant of Alberni District Fall Fair Association on their lands uh, at the Fall Fair and uh, has been for a long period of time, as I understand it. And um, I don't know how many years ago, um, a, a secondary tenancy was created, um, probably on the intention with intention that it be on city lands that are leased to the Fall Fair Association, but um, in fact that secondary tenancy, tenancy is outside of the lease area. And if you look at the map on the screen, um, we're looking at an aerial view of the Fall Fair grounds, um, the horse barns in that area C in red, and just to the north is a clearing, which I believe is the, the what, what, I, what I refer to as a secondary tenancy, where Alberni Paving is, um, is located. And so in 2014, this came to the city's attention, came to council's attention. Um, upon um, review, we found that the uh, secondary tenancy is outside of the lease area um, that between the city and the Fall Fair Association. And regardless of the fact that it's outside the lease area, the, the lease has a provision, several provisions that, that um, would prevent that land, for any land from being sublet without the city's approval or for uses not congruent with the zoning. Um, the um, current Alberni Paving's use of those lands is considered light industrial use and that land is currently zoned for park use and um, as my report says the city uh, may have consented verbally, I I believe we did consent um, verbally to the occupancy when it occurred. In 2014 um, council directed that the city, um, that staff provide a report to um, council on this item I can't find any record of a written report, but um, there is record that staff uh, made efforts to facilitate um, Alberni paving and finding other suitable locations in the community, and and we were unsuccessful at that. Uh, And then December 12th, 2016, when uh, we were reviewing our status report, this has been a longstanding item on our status report, Council gave direction at that meeting, December 12th, 2016, that an eviction notice be issued, and that letter notice of eviction was issued March 10th, 2017. So, um, as I said, this is a challenge for us um, that um, we've got a a land use um, contrary to zoning, which which we cannot turn a blind eye to. If if we were to um, to not repair the situation, um, it it really um, would put us in a position where we'd, we'd be hamstrung in terms of enforcing land zoning use, land use contrary to zoning in, in any other regard. So um, I'm suggesting to council that um, we must either put an end to the tenancy or take steps to enable the tenancy to be there. So I presented three options for council's consideration. Maybe Davina will put them up. 69. So those options, um, option one is uh, continue with the eviction. So that would involve staying the course um, set in December of last year and, um, and, and proceeding with the eviction. And we've heard, and you'll hear again tonight possibly from Bernie Paving and Bernie District Fall Fair Association that that um, creates a hardship for both of them. 
Option two would be extend the notice period of, ev of eviction, notice of eviction period. Um, and that could involve providing more time for Alberni foot paving to find a, a suitable new location and for the Fall Fair Association to explore options for adjusting to the loss of revenue. And option three, uh, we could enable the tenancy. And to do that, that would require that we amend our official community plan and the zoning of that land from its current use as parks to light industrial use. And that we then expand the lease area between the city and the Fall Fair Association to add that portion of land um, under lease to the Fall Fair Association. And then um, through a letter, um, authorize the Fall Fair Association to sublet to Alberni Paving. So those are your three options, Mr. Mayor. Um, they're difficult. It's a difficult situation, uh, one that I'm sure nobody intended to create, but it's, a, it's an issue that uh, is before Council. Both Alberni Paving and Alberni District Fall Fair Association are in the room. If Council wants to hear from either, they've indicated that they're willing to speak. Okay, uh, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the property we're talking about, do we have any use for it? Is, is, is somebody banging down the doors to want to buy it, or is it just a piece of leftover zone parks that we could? It, it's land that we don't have an active use for. Uh, yeah. Nobody's asking to uh, use it for its, its zoned use. Uh, my understanding, it, it, was, um, it is land that has been groomed and cleaned up by the current tenant and by the Fall Fair Association. So we could indeed lease it to the fall fair who could in turn lease it to alberni paving and hopefully keep the last paving company in port alberni in town so that uh, they don't have to pull up stakes or or if, i mean if this part of their their paving operation goes down then they're they're in a bit of a pickle so uh i'm i'm really thinking if the property is useless we should proceed with the uh option three and then uh keep another small business in Port Alberni and keep uh, something that we need in this town, which is a paving company. Mr. Mayor, if uh, Council wants to know more about enabling the tenancy, um, Scott Smith, our Director of Development Services, could pr provide you with a list of the steps we would take, um, maybe provide more detail than I've provided in my report, if Council wants to hear that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sorbet, then Councillor Paulson. Uh, my question to the CAO is, uh, can't we deal, I, I love the idea, but why are we having to go through the fall fair people? Can't we just deal directly with the uh, paving company? Mr. Mayor, we could. We could um, rezone the land and, and uh, put it out for bids for lease and, uh, and, and presumably lease to Alberni Paving. The hardship created on Alder Alberni District Fall Fair Association, as I understand it, would be the loss of revenue. So that's, that wouldn't solve their issue of losing the tenancy. And maybe you need to hear from the Fall Fair Association. Um, they've told me that if they lose the tenancy in the in the, the um, second tenancy, they'll they'll lose their their tenant on their site as well. So it would um, it would be challenging for them. And my second question is, what are they doing with the land, the paving company, right now? Mr. Mayor, that might be a question for Alberni Paving. Okay, well we'll save those questions because they'll I'm sure they'll be coming. Uh, Councillor Paulson. Um, took the opportunity to take a drive out there today and actually talk to the owner of Alberni Paving today and um, um, basically what they're doing is recycling. Uh, they're recycling old, uh, old pavement and um, they actually made the investment in a $200,000 recycling machine. Um, I was assured that it was one of the cleanest uh, operating um, recycling machines in North America. As a matter of fact, the U.S. The, the U.S. military has bought a bunch of them just recently for airports. Um, after talking to the proponent, I, one of the things that concerns me is, is we're putting stress on a local business. And um, if there's some way that we can uh, amicably um, work together to make sure that this business succeeds in our own community, they, they live in our community, they play in our community, um, after having that discussion today, um, he has made every effort in the world to uh, find another location, one of which was over $300,000 for, what, an acre and a half, I think. And um, that's not uh, really viable for, for a small business like this. But uh, 
I like what I saw them doing. There's some trails around the outside that they have not infringed on. They made sure the integrity of that has been has been upheld. Uh, the site, it, I think, is relatively clean. I mean, it's gravel and dirt and pavement, but um, um, I think they've taken care of it. Uh, Mr. Zomar, with the looming um, end of the, um, or, or March coming up, has started to kind of downsize there. And I feel bad because he's disposed of some of his buildings on site and um, uh, he's just unsure of the future of the business. And I don't know, Mr. Zomar, if you want to add anything to, to what I'm saying there, but um, you might want to talk about the recycling and, and, and what the site is used for maybe. Well, this may be an opportunity, uh, Mr. Zomar, to come up uh, to the, the podium there to, to address he's council. He's pretty shy. <laughs> Hello. Um, as he was saying, uh, we recycle asphalt. We are running 100% recyclable. Uh, we come into your parking lots or your driveways and we dig up your driveway and we run it through a machine and we add a canola oil to it. That is it. And it comes out brand new asphalt again and we relay it. Uh, the machine that we have, we own, is actually designed for me to pull up in front of your house, in front of your driveway and rip it up. And I say cook it, but it's re redo it again and lay it out and right in front of your house. So what we've come upon in the, in the years of having it is we're coming along lots of, we have to find storage for our asphalt chunks, our product that we use. And where we were before, which was on the fairgrounds, just wasn't working. We have to move every year for the fall fair when it comes into town. <clears throat> so the fall fair board thought, well, we don't want to lose you guys up here, so let's try to find a little bit more land. So we thought we went through the right processes and we signed a new lease. Everything was fine. Um, and now we're running into problems. But uh, as I said, all we're doing where we are right now is stockpiling. Uh, we don't run five days a week. Um, there's lots of times that we're not even back in this area of land that we're talking about for weeks or a month at a time. Um, but when we are back there, it's uh, everything is good. Uh, we're friendly. Uh, all the neighbors come by. Everything's rolling good. So all we think we're doing is instead of us co pulling in front of the, our house and flashing up the little plant and all that, we're just a little bit more convenient. We're cooking it up there and loading it into our dump truck and then bringing it to your residence and laying it on the driveway. We're running 100% recyclable. Okay, Councillor Sobe. Is there any questions? Any Councillor Sobe and then Councillor Alamed. Just a question to the CAO, because we're actually talking about a zoning which is park, and, and there's an industrial process going, working on it, on a park zoning. Is, is there any, um, recorded complaints from the neighborhood or anything about the noise or anything like that because it had been there for a while so i'm just wondering if there's it says the neighborhood's friendly but do we have any large uh, complaints of people having uh, objections with the mr mayor i think we need to hear from mr smith on that okay uh, let's just go ahead mr smith Um, that that is how it, it got to or began this process is we did receive a public complaint and then the investigation to you know figured out what was you know where we are today and it's progressed as we've gone but the city did receive we have received a, a raft of complaints but we did receive a public complaint but that area is zoned as park yeah this, this piece of property is a much larger it's it's a portion of a, a large piece of property which is the a, which is owned by the city, which is within the Rogers Creek Ravine. So it's, 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 it's acres and acres of property that this is just a piece on top of the Rogers Creek Ravine, and that whole area is owned park, yes. And can I ask what the complaint consists of? Is it noise or traffic or? I, I, I don't know. I'd, okay. I'd have to, I, I wouldn't want to guess on that. Mr. Zomar can respond to that. Um, yeah, at the time it was a new resident to the valley. She had moved from Newfoundland and she sort of uh, <laughs> moved into the area and went for a walk. 
and walked by and seen our big pile of asphalt chunks that we had just sitting there and the beautiful creek that's down the ravine below and she thought something was up so I believe she went on to AV Chatterbox and something else to do with the Facebook or something like that <laughs> and she touched all the right areas it got to you guys and I understand what's going on but uh, since that time like I said all the regulars we've been in that area I believe it's been six or seven years now we've been up in the fairgrounds for about 35 years I believe it is but in that area for about six or seven years and we know all the neighbors up there we, there's there's only a handful of houses up at the end of 10th Avenue there and you know, we call them our security guys. They're always walking through. It's always people walking through with their dogs. We've saved the trails. Uh, we've put up picnic tables. People sit and eat lunch and watch us work. Um, so, yeah, I believe it was just the one lady complaining. It wasn't about noise and all that. She just needed to ask some questions, and she went on to the AV Chatterbox, which started all of this. Okay. Yeah, and I understand that, but it's just the fact that, you know, I need to learn more about the neighborhood and all that and how they feel about it. But the thing is, it's a parked area. Uh, they right. purchased their house, they pay taxes, and right. expect a parked area, and now they got industrial. So, you know, uh, right. yeah. people may complain if it's one person, but, yeah. but still, she, there's yeah. a zoning process for a reason. I agree. Uh, I agree. It is a park. I gotcha. But where it is, I mean, you would have to go up there and take a look at where it is. It's not like... You say park and it's not like a park no, it's more like park. in the bush exactly. and actually when we when the when it became available for us it was more i like it was it was groomed to where it was now it was just a piece of swampy kind of marshy land that we've kind of built up over the years and but i understand okay there are there are three more questions and i bet all three of them are for you mr zomar so um uh, councillor alamani uh less a question just just a background because i you know, when this came forward, um, and the reason I, I brought it forward in the first place was because the, the, the resident was concerned about the, the use of a, a, you know, parkland for, for an industrial use. Um, I don't think anyone has any, has any uh, problem with, with Alberni Paving as a, as a company or, or anything like that. Um, but it's, it's just the incompatibility with the, with the location. Um, and as a city, you know, obviously, like like the the manager has said, we need to rectify, you know, the zoning and and all of that. Um, I I can't I can't believe that there isn't somewhere that that could be that isn't on the edge of a park, um, on the edge of a stream, on the edge of a, uh, uh, you know, fish habitat. Um, there there certainly has to be somewhere, even on the fall fairgrounds. Uh, that would be more suitable than than that particular area, um, but the, the question has to be solved some some way. I agree. Um, you know whether we go through a, a public hearing process with with the zoning and 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 all of that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how that would work out, um, or or we figure out if we're we're gonna give more time for for another solution, but. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to, to point out that you know it, it wasn't a it wasn't a, a slight against any of any activities by a company. It's it's just you know yeah, it's not I a compatible agree. area for the for the and when you for say the park, Excuse me, and you say park and all that stuff. It's it's above the Roger Creek, I and mean, mm -hmm. it sounds like you said fish habitat, all that. But all along there is actually all pretty much except where the residential houses are is already zoned industrial as far as. Dolan's Concrete, which has been there for years, J.W. Berry, and then it comes up the ravine to where we are, and it's a little piece of park, and then there's the other side of the ravine, it's the end of Teebel Avenue, which is all the industrial and all that again. So if you were to look at an aerial map that's colored, it's just a, a little piece there that really isn't industrial. So right. I get you, you know, you sound like fish habitat, all that kind of stuff, but there is lots of other industrial, not light Industrial, industrial businesses that are running along at the top of that ravine already and have been for years. For sure. Yeah, and there was also a you know was a landfill that was there at one point as well and all of that <laughs> kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Except we called it the dump. Um, Councilor Minions. 
Thank you. Um, so if I understand correctly, you said it's part a uh, piece of a larger parcel of land, so we'd need to subdivide and rezone, is that correct? <laughs> Subdivision of, of, of that particular parcel would be very challenging, I think. We'd have to, to have some kind of lease arrangement, um, whether it's directly with Alberni Paving or through the Alberni Fall Fair. Um, it's not that it couldn't be done, but it would be uh, costly and not simple. But so without uh, and, with, and without having looked into that in any detail. Yeah. So you said it's a piece of a larger parcel of land, though. So would we be rezoning that entire larger parcel from Park to Industrial? It, not in my opinion. Um, so how would I mean, that work? Is how, what I'm trying to get an idea of. Well, you can, can do just you can do piece. you can do split zoning. Okay. On a so you would we would likely if council wished to we would just identify okay. a portion of a much larger piece that would potentially go through a process okay. for council to consider. Okay. So I think, um, I mean, I would love to see this addressed um, for Alberni paving, and I think it probably, you know, isn't really hurting anyone in the current use it's in. I agree we can't let it, we can't ignore what the zoning is. Um, my kind of feeling, though, is that we will, it's easy to sit up here and make the decision, but when we get to a public hearing trying to rezone parkland even if it is largely surrounded by industrial um, a lot of us are probably going to change our minds on that rezoning because the public is not going to be happy about us rezoning any amount of park space to light industrial so I mean I'm sitting up here and listening to the business owner and thinking yeah let's rezone that um, but I think after going through a public hearing process it's going to be a difficult rezoning so I'm not sure where I stand on it Councillor McClendon. Thank you. Um, I, I too went out there today and, and had a look and was quite impressed with the work they're doing. And I also appreciated the fact that they weren't, the Alberni uh, paving people were not bucking the notice. In fact, I hadn't heard from them at all here at Council. We just heard from the kinsmen finally. Uh, and we're actually trying to take things down and get rid of it, not knowing where they had, were going to go or what they're going to do. So I, I believe it's all been in good faith. And there was a comment, I think, the CAO made, and I'm not sure if I heard you right, but did you say that it's possible that the, the, the someone from the city gave them some kind of verbal permission or something like that? I, I didn't catch your exact comment, but that's what I took. My report makes reference to the city may have given verbal support. I, I haven't verified that, but the fall fairs letter, I believe, um, says that, uh, that city staff did give permission, but I have not verified that. Okay. Uh, and so, M Mr. Mayor, I would go with, with option three, and I agree with uh, Councillor Minions. It, it, it may be a problem, and it may not. Um, the fall fairs uh, got, a, a, got a good rep, and maybe we should hear from them too, or maybe it's not necessary. But I, I, I would um, make a motion that we investigate option three and have staff come back and see how that will work. Uh, I don't think we know today that it will work, but I think that we can come back and figure that out. Um, yes, Mr. Smith. Um, I mean, we, we can do a clarification report if you, if you want, but essentially, if you want to enable this use to continue, we, we have to begin the process to amend the city's official community plan and zoning bylaw, and then if that was successful, then there'd be the potential for them to continue there under some sort of lease arrangement that would have to be uh, worked out. But it's very clear if, if that use is to continue, we would need to amend the city's official commute plan and zoning bylaw for a portion for that portion of property anyway. Right. Um, uh, sorry, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Oh, before we go, Mr. Smith, um, what kind of timeline are you talking if we started this right away? Uh, well, typical rezoning is a you know a four to five month process. Uh, there is a twelve hundred dollar application fee, but the city is the owner of the land. Yeah. We we technically have to apply, or you have to direct that we begin that process. Whether you wish to have that fee paid by the proponents, uh, you know, or, or not. I mean, it's, it's somewhat. If, if we chose to proceed with this process. 
Does that give Albany Paving or in the fall for any kind of exemption, or is he going to have to move out at the end of March and then move back in after it's done in May? Or it, it, again, somewhat up to council, and we'd probably want to give some written clarification to them. If council wanted to do, go through that process, I would say leave them, let them, let them stay there in that interim time until a decision is made by council. But that would be at council's discretion. Currently, there's a letter asking them to leave. Okay, so um, for me, I, I, I would like to hear from the Fall Fair uh, Association. Uh, just uh, Mayor uh, Rattan, Council. Scott Green, Vice Chairman of Fall Fair. Been with the fair for pushing 40 years. And I was involved with the uh, negotiations to get the uh, lease from the city many years ago. And we were under the understanding, because time does go on and you don't really go out there and look to see where your boundaries are that it was our property and uh, that's how this all came about but just so council understands is that we have uh, our costs for the fair are th over three hundred thousand dollars of that we have hundred and thirty five thousand dollars before the fair starts so this is very important to us that you understand the fifteen thousand dollars is a lot of money to us any more questions? Um, I think we understand the concept. I'm just uh, curious, and I think you answered the question, how, how it came about that you thought it was within your lease. Yeah, with your the lease. city, yes. Yeah. And, and the fact that you were leasing it for, um, and, and I, again, this is history, but how did it come about that you felt you were leasing it for a use that, it wasn't zoned for or that what, you when we, we got permission. the lease uh, originally it was I guess we were try we needed the property out back for our, our horse shows and stuff yeah so uh, and I think it was back around the time when the uh, summer games were here and so uh, we came to an understanding with the city and actually the people up in the neighborhood because there was a public hearing in regards to it and uh, we went over what we wanted and what we were planning on doing and as time goes on we forget exactly what the lease was and, and where our property boundaries were. We just thought basically that North 40 was, was ours because uh, a lot of that land out there over time had been filled in with city bringing uh, stuff up there and backfilling it. And uh, so like I say, we just kept plowing it out there and leveling it out and over time uh, things get forgotten about, unfortunately. Okay. So you understand the situation the city's in, position the city's yes, in to try to Yes, we do, and, and that's why it was one reason why we wanted to be here tonight to uh, make you understand how important it is to us, but we also understand how important it is to council to try to re rectify this problem. Yeah. So we're hopefully something can come out of this. Well, if we are going to address it, we're going to have to address it and do it correctly. Yes. Or else we have a, an even bigger problem. <laughs> yes. Like, I don't know if there's any other options out there. I know uh, Tim come up with three options. Is there, you know, maybe there's another option out there. I, I don't know. There may be. Uh, so we have, a, we have a motion and we have a seconder, I believe, City Clerk, right? Thank, thank you, Scott. Yeah, the motion at the moment, Mr. Mayor, is to investigate option three. Okay. All right. I think, you know, ha having listened to uh, what what is going on here i'd like to just change the motion to to option three and it's still investigating I, I i guess but the word investigation doesn't let them start anything so i'll just make the motion to do option three if okay. i have a seconder that is i'll second that i'll second okay any other comment uh councillor minions and then councillor alman just wondering if we should specify um that we would extend the eviction notice until the process. Um, well, let's do option three, and then we can have a second motion uh, if we if this one passes. Uh, Councillor Alamany, I, I just just on principle, I can't support a motion that would turn a park anything that's zoned as a park beside a park into an industrial zoning. So, uh, you know, if council is going to go that direction, that's fine, and and uh, hopefully there are solutions. Um, but on principle, that's that's pretty tough, and I think that's going to be the the question that the community is going to have as well. Okay, 
uh, on the motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And then I'll, uh, Councillor uh, McClemon. Yes, I, I would move that uh, City of Port Alberni uh, cancel the eviction notice at this time to Alberni paving. I'll second it, Mr. Mayor. Are you okay? That's, that's your motion? Uh, I, I think it's cleaner than just say extended six months, extended six months, and we can always rewrite it if we have to. Okay, uh, Councillor Minions first. Uh, I, don't, I think I'd be comfortable, more comfortable with extending it um, so that we don't have to restart the process, but I'd be curious to hear from staff. Okay, uh, City Clerk. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would suggest that it, it be extended until following a decision on the OCP and zoning bylaw application process. Yeah, I'd be more comfortable with that one too. Okay, so do you want to rephrase your motion so that yeah, it's... Yeah, I rephrase it to what the city clerk just said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second Councillor McClemmon's motion. <laughs> and all it took was for Councillor Minions to put that thought in your head so that you got it correct, no? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, on the motion to uh, extend the eviction notice. Uh, all those in favor? Carried. So, uh, Mr. Zomar, I'm not sure if that gives you any uh, greater security or not, but you'll take it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Council. Uh, moving on, Council from the uh, Director of uh, Finance, the holiday bus schedule. We have a report. Uh, advising that the city in collaboration with BC Transit and Diversified Transportation is offering free busing on New Year's Eve uh, from 7.30 until 1.30 a.m. Has, as has been the practice in, in uh, previous years. Uh, Councillor Minions, uh, do you want to move that motion? That the report dated December 5th advising that the city in collaboration with BC Transit and Diversified Transportation is offering free busing on New Year's Eve from 7.30 until 1.30 a.m. be received. I'll second that and... Okay, uh, Councillor McClemon. I'm just curious, uh, how, how many people actually take, I hope a lot do, and take the New Year's Eve buses? Um, CEO, do you have any idea? No, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't know how many take advantage of the bus. Um, am I correct in thinking that this already fits within their budget? You're correct. Uh, we estimate um, a loss of revenue in the neighborhood of $300, and this is already in BC Transit's budget that is funded by the city. And I could contest that it is being used, very. You can attest that it is being used? Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And uh, McLean's Mill Society, we have a report, and I'm not sure if we still have, ah, there we go. Um, Executive Director Botwain, welcome. Um, before you do say anything, I want to tell you uh, how much I enjoyed uh, breakfast with Santa yesterday. Um, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I wanted to take a couple of minutes of your time this evening to answer any questions about my report and then possibly touch on a possible hot button issue for this evening, but I don't actually feel that it is, and that's the Heritage Commission and how I value our potential partnership going forward. So, first of all, does anyone have any questions? Um, Councillor McClemon and then Councillor Sobe. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming, and I'm sorry I missed the last meeting. I had some grandson things to do. Um, uh, but I haven't heard, uh, there was talk a couple months back of doing some work and making it possible to run the, the mill next year. Is that still on, or is that something changed on there? It's definitely still on. We are absolutely evaluating economically, sustainability what purposes. We need to make sure that this is something that we can afford to do and that all safety measures are taken due to the fact that there's some maintenance that needs to be done. So if it doesn't happen in this year, this is not something that we're just putting to the wayside. It's an active conversation. So you will be pleased with, I'm sure, our next meeting because it's been coming up quite a bit lately as we make our financial decisions and budgeting for next year and beyond. Okay, Councillor Sobe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you could turn to uh, page 92, please. I'm just going through the budget 
And uh, I just had a few questions here, and I need to understand. I'm not an accountant or anything. When it comes here for the uh, line 5030 and 5040, cost of food for general store, we got it budgeted for 16,000. Years to date, 415, 3%. Then cost for food, cafe, and events, 9,000. But is this, we went over budget on this? Or how do I understand that? So with our food costing, because we have taken a completely different business model than we had planned at the beginning of the year, and because our food service turned into more of a, a deal than we expected, we have gone over that budget item. However, we've also increased our revenues, so it balances. Exactly. And my next question was uh, the first line, 4570 Canada Summer Students. We budgeted for 20000 but we're spending 44000 That's... Oh, that's an income or revenue? So years to date. It's because we had an, an extra grant. An extra and, grant? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. Anything else, Councillor? Councillor Alamani? Thank you. Um, can you speak at all to funding opportunities or grants that you've been able to scare up for the rail um, maintenance? So or far, castles? so far, we have not had any accepted grants. That does not mean that we're not applying. We're actually looking at different, uh, different tactic now. We are going to be engaging in an active fundraising proposal going forward for 2018. Primarily, it is to fund the trestle rebuild, the top decks. We're looking at uh, speaking with the, the engineer now into finding out processes to give us a two to three year fix versus a one year fix versus what our options are that way to see if there's a way that we can spread out some of the work. We're very, very obviously committed. You can see by the work that we've done this year to doing appropriate rail maintenance. So this is really gonna come down to is this something that we as a community can get behind? I also think it's something that the island will get behind. Uh, we're one of the only operating rail assets on the island right now, so it's an interesting perspective. We don't want to lose this. We definitely enjoy being able to offer the rail service that we do, but the steam engine's an asset in the community. It raises our, uh, it's a more of an expensive thing to run for as a business. However, it's got such a huge, rich history that it's something that we think is very valuable to continue going after. So right now, whenever we've got a few different people and I welcome the community to throw things to, to my desk, if you hear of a grant that I haven't heard of yet, we're gonna not leave a stone unturned. Have you heard of any, Councillor Alleman? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Councillor Paulson. Um, I just wanted to say um, um, what a breath of fresh air uh, with some of the programming that you've done out there, whether it be the Santa Breakfast or the Halloween event, um, just so many other things. It seems like the site is um, really active. I saw a picture of the setup for the Santa Breakfast. Incredible. It looked, looked, looked like Hogwarts. It it's felt long like rows magic, of tables though. Anyway, congratulations to you guys for a job well done in, in a shortened season and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. On behalf of my team, we are very pleased to be doing this work. As you can see behind you, we have a, a attentive calendar of events for 2018 already. We've got quite a few bookings going into the, the next year. Now, having said that, I'm not sure if you recall last month in my report, we were talking about the eight arms of the McLean Mill Society's project vision for the McLean Mill Historic Park, why we changed the name. And I wanted to just make a note to ease um, as we move into creating new, stronger relationships in the community. One of the areas within that is the National Historic Site. So we recognize this year has been such an audit of a year. We've had to really evaluate how the systems worked financially, how operations worked, what the potential was on the site. Going into 2018, if you turn to my, I'm not sure what page it will be on your report. It is, pardon me, under the heading Partnerships Development. I want us to take this opportunity to recommend from my own diligence how important this commission is for us. 
I have not been sitting on the commission this, this year as it was just not part of the plan as of yet. It really came to light well in the later part as we were planning for 2018, how important it will be for me as the executive director running this property to have the expertise of some commission, folks like these guys who have a really large breadth of knowledge that I don't contain. contain. That's not where my skill set is, but I really like to have the best team around me. So having said that, we are looking at it from the lens of course, because we're mandated to do so to make this a sustainable pro property to become one of our tourism jewels and gems on the island within the community. I think that there is work that can be done here for all of us to increase our visitorship, that could increase the attraction, that could increase the user experience to become a remarkable destination. I definitely feel that there is an opportunity here. So I would love to have any feedback there and I would really, really love it to be part of the conversation as the bylaws are being rewritten, if there's a place for that. You know, I have to say, I, uh, I appreciate the communication. Uh, it's what you said you would do, what your McLean's Mills Society said would be done on a regular basis and, and you've done exactly what you said you would do, providing these in-depth reports to us each council meeting. And I think that's really helped council to understand what the progress has been, but I think it also helps council to verify for it for ourself as a council that the direction that we set three years ago has kind of is ending up in the in where we'd hoped we would be. Right. And it was a little bit well, it was more than a little bit muddy when we started, but then that's the nature of change. It is pretty muddy when you start, but we knew as a council that. We, that the status quo wasn't, wasn't okay. We knew we needed to change, and we needed to change fairly radically if we were gonna achieve something different. So you've helped us achieve something different, but what I'm really excited about is what will the next five years bring? As am I. Because it'll be quite different still. And uh, I'm hoping that you know, we'll get an increased community and when I say community, I mean that broader community of Vancouver Island and the province in terms of the engagement with the site, because this is an asset. It's a national historic site. Mm -hmm. it's, it is an asset for a community, but it's an asset for that much larger community too, for the, the whole Absolutely. nation. So I, I, but I also really appreciate the numbers. I appreciate the fact that we get this kind of regular reporting on a monthly basis so that it it's, it's reassurance to us as council that we're kind of heading on the right track. So thank you so much for your commitment and your willingness to communicate. And some might think it as being over communicating, but I don't think for us as council that we I've do I've been it accused that of that before. <laughs> well, I think it's important in this, uh, in this day and age to do exactly that. We think it's really important as well to just really stay focused on the goals here between all of us, so communicating that is very important to be very vocal and have a good conversation back and forth is really important. We definitely realize that there's room for fine tuning, but that's where the that's where the piece that comes in where development becomes really fun. Next year we get to go into the fine tuning piece of this property and I'm really pleased to be working on it. And I'm very happy to be coming back month after month with progress for all of you, for our community. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor McClemon, do you want to uh, move receipt of the this report, please? I move that we receive the report from the director of the McLean Spinal Society. So, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. And Council, we we have a current status report. Um, See, Mr. Mayor, we have a late item. Oh yes, thank you. Uh, report. Late item from uh, Mr. Deacon uh, Grant application rural, rural dividend fund. Thank you. I even wrote it down. Welcome, Mr. Deacon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, councillors. Uh, first off, I want to apologize for the fact that you're getting a late item. Uh, that's uh, not my style. I recognize that it reduces the time that uh, you might want for consideration. Uh, the issue is that uh, we are applying to the uh, Rural Dividend Program. 
uh, on their fourth and possibly last intake. Uh, and it requires a resolution of council and a letter confirming its uh, partnership with FP Innovations and the Colson Group uh, on the application. Uh, the application is for a wildfire suppression center of excellence. Uh, council may remember that I have talked on a few different occasions over the last couple of years about an aerial forest firefighting center of excellence, a nighttime aerial forest firefighting center of excellence, a wildfire training center of excellence, and by the time we get the grant application in, which is due on Friday, we will um, have, or we do have it uh, nailed um, currently. So uh, the concept of this is considered a key element in support of uh, leveraging the community's investment in the Alberni Valley Regional Airport, and it would also leverage uh, the Colson Group's uh, work in this field uh, the uh, Wildfire Suppression Center of Excellence uh, aims to develop solutions to the escalating issues of economic, social, and environmental damages caused by interface and wildfires uh, worldwide, because we do aim to be a worldwide center of excellence with this. Of course, uh, today the news is all around uh, California but uh, all over the summer it was the interior of BC uh, and of course in the, uh, it has been other jurisdictions every year. So it does involve uh, the creation of innovative approaches to better protect structures and communities from wildfires in the future. Um, the Economic Development Office is partnering with FPI or FP Innovations and the Colson Group. Uh, we have partnered with uh, FP Innovations previously. Uh, the Rural Dividend Program allows not-for-profit organizations and for-profit entities as partners in a municipality's application. Uh, an application with for-profit partners must identify broad community benefits and show that it does not negative, negatively impact other businesses. That same standard was used in adjudicating our successful application for uh, the maximized value wood biomass initiative. The partners uh, must come up with 40% of the project's budget FP Innovations will pro be providing the majority of that with the Colson Group and the city uh, providing smaller amounts respectively. It's proposed that uh, our contribution would be $10,000 in funding from my, uh, or from the allocation to the economic development function and that uh, $5,000 worth of uh, staff time uh, be invested in, in it. Uh, all of uh, the rural dividend contributions come directly to the city uh, for distribution back out to whomever is involved uh, in the project. So I'm happy to take any questions. Council? Questions? Question. All right, then. Uh, Councillor Paulson, do you want to move the motion? I'd like to move that Council for the City of Port Alberni authorize the submission of an application to the BC Rural Dividend Program in partnership with FP Innovations and the Colson Group for the Port Alberni Wildfire Suppression Center of Excellence and that Council support this project through its duration. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion, Council? I think Council told that question. Uh, I don't think. That $10,000 that's going from the city and all that, is that for the grant application, to prepare a grant application, or is it, where's the money going? That's what I'm asking. No, it, it would be a part of the budget for uh, the project. So the project itself will 
look at um, research uh, centers of excellence, that look at simulators. Um, and uh, so assuming that um, the, uh, you know, the budget the, uh, for the application is uh, 300,000 uh, uh, to the Rural Dividend Program, then, um, uh, sorry, if the application was uh, 300,000, uh, we would be looking at 40% on top of that. And as I mentioned, the most of that would come from FB Innovations, as was done in the last project or is being done in the current project. And maybe if you could explain to Council, what's the big benefit of this for the community of Port Alberta? Uh, it would uh, put us on the uh, uh, map uh, worldwide for our work in uh, wildfire and interface uh, suppression. Uh, it would leverage uh, the six million or seven million that has gone into the Alberni Valley Airport. Uh, I think, um, and uh, you know, there's lots of contention about um, you know the maybe some of the issues around wildfires are that um, we haven't managed the forest properly and uh, allowed some of it to burn uh, but i think everybody is recognizing the uh, as i mentioned and here the economic social and environmental damage that's going on when uh, a wildfire gets out of uh, control and people are losing their homes and their businesses and that kind of thing. And so. there's no provincial contribution to this? Well, the pro provincial contribution would be the Rural Dividend Program. So, um, and the reason that we don't have uh, a firm budget at the moment is that FP Innovations uh, are looking to see what they can contribute towards this project. Uh, in the last project, they contributed $170,000, so that enabled us to more than fulfill uh, the 40%. Uh, I'll give a bit of background on it too, but uh, Councillor Alamani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I certainly support the, the, the idea. I mean, uh, the, what we're seeing in Southern California is is literally climate change. It's it's that area of the world changing into something else, and those fires aren't going to go away. Um, so the, there's there's an opportunity as as uh, dark as it is for um, uh, learning, and uh, you know we will need to uh, to figure out better ways of of managing f forest fires. So if if Port Alberni can can leverage um, you know the the expertise that we have here, then that's that's good. Um, my my only question though is uh, because this is focused um, at the at the airport or or with Colston's, um, how how does it involve the the city? Because it's not on it's not in city limits, or does that come into it? I just that part of it I don't quite understand. Yeah, um, I'm actually expecting that uh, uh, the center of excellence uh, itself would be within the city. And uh, because uh, when we um, drafted the uh, uh, initial proposal for it, we were also looking at a, a tourism component, um, a visitor education uh, component so uh, we realized that uh, we didn't want a lot of traffic to be going out to the airport for that uh, and that the uh, <coughs> land uh, that is at the airport is uh, limited in terms of what we can do so um, however we are expecting to hoping and expecting to attract other companies uh, that would be working in this field to come to the community. We expect that they uh, they would be looking for a hangar at the airport. But the visitor center itself, I'm expecting we would see in the community. So just a little bit to add to that. Um, 
up until the end of 2016, forest firefighting, uh, wildfire fighting um, worldwide was about a $2 billion a year business. BC alone this year has been almost a billion dollars. And uh, California, who knows what it's going to be by the time uh, December 31st rolls around, that it's going to be a fair amount of money for sure. Um, more importantly, uh, this is an opportunity for us to be seen as the place to go to learn how to provide the solution worldwide. And since the work will be done using simulators, that can be done in any large building anywhere. It doesn't have to actually be at the airport. Those simulators will be designed and constructed right here in the Alberni Valley. So that's just a whole other part to our economy. But uh, this sector is one of the six sectors that we're working on, which is uh, the education sector. Uh, a lot of it, uh, ultimately, if it, when it, if it gets off the ground, it'll be uh, much more than the, the half million dollars. It'll be you know tens of millions of dollars to put it together. and. Th that funding sources can come with some assistance of the federal government and private industry and what have you. So, for me, it's a yeah, it'd be a big bonus for us as a community. Uh, on the motion, I believe we've been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you, Council. Thank you, uh, Council. Then that brings us to uh, uh, status report. Um, Council, it's quarter to nine. How about if we take a five minute recess and then uh, come back at 10 to nine? Thank you.
Okay, Council. This brings us to our next item, which is our current status report. And um, Council, uh, my apologies, but I do actually have a few questions about the uh, status report and uh, um, maybe the rest of Council does as well. So before I start on mine, maybe I'll leave it uh, out to you and I can cross some off my list if you've got questions. Uh, Councilor McClemon? And the only question that I guess I've been still thinking about is the Arrowview Hotel and where we, I hope we're not slowing down on our actions there because of someone actually bought it. That's uh, number 29, I think. 30. Number 30? Okay, that was one of the ones on my list. So, uh, um, Mr. Smith, what's the current status of number 30? You know we're going to keep asking this, right? Yep. <laughs> Uh, so myself and the building inspector uh, have been in communications with the new owner. He is indicating that he is developing a plan to, to fix the building. Uh, we will be putting uh, a letter to him with timelines requiring him to proceed uh, with, to either submit those plans to the city so that we can see that he has a realistic plan to accomplish uh, fixing that building or uh, d the, de the, demo the demolishing of the building. So. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Councilor McClellan? I guess, uh, what's the timeline? I, I thought we actually gave him some time for the previous owner, which I don't see it should be any difference. Well, we, we, we do have to give a new owner more time than a, than a previous owner because he's just taking asset. He's come to council saying he's proposing something different. So um, we do need to give him a bit of time. That being said, he did acquire the property with the knowledge of what was going on. So I'm not talking a huge amount of time. I was thinking in the neighborhood of uh, 30 to 45 days that he we required to get something to us. Thank you, Councilor Minions. Thank you. Um, for the city clerk, um, now that she's back, I know there was a question at the last council meeting about um, the items that are regarding the next election. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Smith, uh, you're not You'll quite ready to go yet. <laughs> um, and I know they're, they're medium and low on your list, um, but specifically mail-in voting um, and those types of things um, since we're about a year from our next election, and I would imagine you'll be busier as we get closer. Yes, I expect so. And um, I, I will be reviewing those items early in the new year. I've already prepared a draft of the um, election bylaw to include um, mail-in um, ballots. I haven't brought it to council as yet. I uh, have to do a thorough review of the election bylaw because the legislation changed and all the section numbers changed. Um, so it will be going up in my radar from to a much higher priority very early in the new year. Thank you. Um, Mr. Smith, I, in, in your part of it, I have questions about uh, 29, 32, and 33. So um, just wondering uh, the year 29, which is about secondary suite provisions of zoning bylaws, including provisions for carriage houses. Um, where are we at with that one? What's the current status of that? So, Council, for, for most of my status report items, uh, given the current workload that I've got with the development applications, bylaw, and engineering, I am not making very much progress on these. Just need to let you know that. And that's going to continue for uh, a little bit. Okay. I'm afraid. I'm still going to ask my questions. <laughs> Fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that means that with the Harborview Apartments, uh, that's you'll be coming back to us with a some sort of comment on that yep that one will we what we'll do is is i'll be getting information from uh rcmp and various other agencies about the experience rating you know the number of calls similar to the one that we looked at um uh you know on on second and argyle and then a report will come forward to council in the similar in similar regard to to that one that one will be easier to put together because i'll be relying on the the other agencies to provide me with the bulk of that information. Okay, thank you. And um, com comments from me are just my comments, they're not council's comments. 
Uh, but with the uh, number 32, the RFP, the Westport place, is still something that's percolating out there. You're still thinking about it. We haven't done anything about it yet, but you're still thinking about it. And the, the number 33, the Social Planning Commission, uh, the requesting, essentially establishing the social planning. We have a community social planning council, I think they call themselves. Uh, and it, it would be our commission if we chose to bring it in. Um, so, they are going to get, I believe, an invitation to the December 19th uh, Committee of the Whole meeting because they may be able to uh, provide some in, insight into how we could address some of our issues. Um, I, for one, am not looking to add another uh, commission to this city. Uh, we have limited staff time and that would only um, impact what available staff time we do have. Okay, but that's just my comment. Thank you. Anything else, Council? Councillor Alamani? I, I did want to bring up number 33 as well, just because I thought it was something that we should, the Social Planning Commission topic. Um, it is something I think that would naturally be part of that conversation on December 19th. Yeah. Um, so just, just to, to put that out there, you know, there are a lot of options, even if they're not, ho hopefully not duplicating anything that the, the Social Planning Committee is doing. Um, but, you know, if, if the city looks at options that has it taking a more independent role or leadership role in actually creating social housing, um, then we might have a specific need for a commission like that. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's go back to the top of my list, which is number 15. Uh, and uh, Director Thorpe, uh, it says, pursue development of a tripartite agreement. I think in our community of the whole, we agreed that it would be also include the ACRD in that. And I think we maybe even had a formal motion to that effect. But if we need another formal motion to the, that effect, we could do that. We don't? Okay. So it's now going to be called a quad agreement instead of tripartite. Mr. Mayor, there, there are a number of items in the status report that, um, or several anyway, that need to have, have an update. And we are overdue for a meeting uh, for Council to review the status report and um, review the priority levels and that sort of thing. So. Um, staff will uh, um, update that one in particular to a uh, quad party agreement. Perfect. Um, thank thank for, you. As per council's direction. And number 20, the, uh, the truck counts, uh, that information is going to be released to council at some point? You could <laughs> Oh, that's you again. <laughs> okay. So um, I, just this afternoon, I did send uh, an email to the company that was doing that, asking them for an updated timeline on when that report will come, come to the city. Okay, thank you. Well, there may be more. <laughs> Number 22, uh, investigate improvements to the intersection of uh, Gertrude and Southgate, which was a matter of uh, public safety. And I, I recognize that you're uh, overburdened with all these things, Mr. Smith, but it's just, you know, where are we at? So we, we have received the traffic count reports for that, for those intersections. Um, we, we will uh, send that information onto ICBC for them to take a look and, and give us a bit of feedback on that. And then we'll have to make a determination what improvements could be made to that intersection if they're capital improvements that would be something we'd have to bring back to council of course okay thank you and there was a request from the owner of uh, the I think it's called the Southgate Mall that we look at the possibility of putting the, the trees back that were cut down there on the boulevard there's two or three of them and I don't know whether we've had a chance to look at that uh, CAO Mr. Mayor, I'm aware that the uh, park supervisor is, is looking at the, the, the ability to put trees back in there. The problem is the overhead wires and okay. uh, finding trees that, that uh, aren't in conflict with those wires and don't want to grow out into the street. So um, he is looking at it with his staff, but no conclusion yet. Okay, thank you. And number uh, 25 under finance, uh, it says develop a purchasing policy that supports local vendors and contractors. And I'm wondering if, uh, if it's possible for staff to look at uh, examples of a social procurement policy that is uh, seen in at least three Vancouver Island municipalities. Is it that is, It possible? is, Mr. Mayor, and a, a motion of council would be helpful on that. Okay. 
Would I'm, I, I will make the motion if someone's interested in uh, willing to second it uh, second that we it. develop a social procurement policy that sorry that we ask staff to uh, to look at examples of social procurement policy. I'll second that. Any discussion, Council? Uh, Councilor McClemon. Social procurement is that like politically correct? Uh, well, it, it has a particular meaning, which is. Um, when we make our our decisions, we base on what's the social benefits for our city first. Okay, like local hire, local purchase. Yes. Okay, that's good. It's probably an updated term. Okay, all in favor? Carried. And uh, number twenty-eight uh, from the operations department, CAO. Uh, just wondering where we're at with the uh, RFP for the solar. Um, Mr. Mayor, our facility supervisor has um, been working with a consultant who was recommended to us by Viridian who wrote the, our um, solar report. And um, we think the next best step is um, the consultant has some thoughts around what, what we should be looking at and what we shouldn't be considering. And we're thinking that rather than us just going ahead and, and drafting an RFP that is, is within that advice, that we should inter interact with council first. The, the consultant should to get um, council's direction on the scope of the RFP. So we'll be looking to do, interact with council in January. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and since I was, anything else council? Since I was dominating all of that, I'll move, uh, I'll move acceptance of uh, the, the receipt of the current status report. Second, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Normally, I leave it up to you guys, but. Uh, Council, we have a report from the Planning and Building Department. <laughs> Any questions? I, I move we receive this wonderful report from the Planning and, and Etc. Department. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. And then uh, we're on to G then, bylaws. Um, we have a report from the public hearing. Uh, from December 5th, looking at uh, 4000 Bird Street, which of course is the old uh, uh, ADSS site, an address that will forever be burned into my brain. Um, Councillor Paulson, do you want to move receipt of that report? That the report of the public hearing held December 5th, 2017, regarding bylaw number 4952 and 4953, be received. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Before we go on, I'd really like to uh, acknowledge the amazing work that was done both by staff and the and the uh, developers on this one. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the questions that could have come were were addressed really well, and uh, many of them beforehand in multiple ways. So it's a good it's a good example of how we can uh, can work with this. Uh, we have um, the official community plan amendment now. Uh, Councillor Paulson? Uh, An official community plan amendment number 25, 4000 Bird Street, District Acquisitions Corp. Uh, bylaw number 4952 be read a third time. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. And you're on a roll there, Councillor. That zoning Paulson. bylaw map amendment number 27, uh, 4000 Bird Street, District Acquisitions Corp. Bylaw number 4953 be read a third time. Second. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you, Council. Uh, which then brings us, Council, to uh, correspondence for action. And the first one is from the Port Alberni Folk Fest Multicultural Society uh, Canada Day Parade. And we have a, a letter uh, requesting uh, a, a meeting uh, to save the July 1st Canada Day celebrations for Port Alberni. And um, Councilor Minions, do you want to um, move receipt of that and then we can respond to it? That the letter dated November 21st, 2017, requesting a meeting to discuss saving the July 1st Canada Day celebrations be received. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And Director Thorpe, you have some suggestions. Yes, thank you. Uh, in the spirit 
of efficiency, much like uh, the last meeting, I uh, took the initiative to meet with uh, members of the, the society, which are in, uh, in attendance this evening. And I met with the members of the society on December the 5th and appreciate they, them engaging us uh, so quickly after their AGM. So their AGM was on November 20. The very next day, they wrote a letter to council indicating their current, current status, which uh, definitely helps the, the process move forward in, in a timely manner. Further to the suggestion from the letter, I'd like to research a little further on, on engaging the remaining members of the society to engage another group in taking that event on. Um, and, and really, that's all, all I have to say at this stage, and I'm not sure if council wishes to engage the group at this time. Um, are you happy with that initiative if, uh, it's, uh, if our director Thorpe is able to assist with that? Yeah, yeah, Pam, come forward. That'd be great. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. We're very concerned about the Canada Day celebrations continuing in the community. And the uh, group, the Women's Business Network, took it on three years, when it was at, three years ago when it was actually not going to happen. And we didn't find that out until well into May. And we had about six weeks to pull it together, which we did. And we've continued for three years. And the reason for the third year was because of the 150, to make sure that that actually happened. But it's, it's really impossible for a very small group of very busy uh, women to, to continue lifting heavy things and making all that happen. And so we wanted the council to know that it's really in jeopardy this year. We simply don't have the workforce to continue the planning and the organization. The volunteers are there. The, the um, plan is there, very clear, the, de the deadlines to get things done, there's even money available to take it forward. But we do need your assistance to make sure that the community has a celebration uh, in 2018. I can't imagine Canada Day without it in Port Alberni. Right. It's really not going to happen unless we get some leadership from you folks to make sure that someone in the community takes on the management of that happening. However it looks, it doesn't have to look the same as we've done it for the last 40 years. It can be something else, but we definitely have to have a parade and some sort of event that day. It was certainly an excellent celebration this year yeah. and lots of positive comments about it. Uh, I didn't hear anything negative at all, so it was, yeah. it was an excellent celebration and uh, it was kind of nice to change it up a little bit. Um, I can't for the life of me see that it's not going to happen but you're right we need to have people step forward to say yes well we want to yeah. participate in that we want to be part of it yeah. um, it's not something that the city of Port Alberni is likely to put in its budget but who knows uh, so I mean the ideal would be a, a group of people that are interested in making it happen so uh, we'll leave this in uh, director Thorpe's capable hands and she'll include you in the uh, in the discussion I'm sure Okay, our members have said that they're there to help guide for sure. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Councillor Paulson? Yeah, just a quick comment. Ned, um, we've put on many large events in our community over the years, and what we find is that volunteer group is getting older. I think you find it with the Salmon Society. Um, um, and really, uh, my request or I implore um, uh, some of the younger people to get involved as volunteers and uh, they bring a great amount of expertise whether it be on the accounting side or the business side or, or those sorts of things and um, you know I think that we had a discussion that the BC Games um, uh, is after Port Alberni to host something again and to be quite frank uh, a lot of us that are involved in, in those past games um, tall ships um, all those things um, we need younger blood to pull that off. I'll get involved, but I'm not going to chair it. <laughs> so, oh, look at let, you. Yeah, let you, the minutes show. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I'm just, I'm imploring our community to get involved and just uh, volunteerism can be so rewarding. And, um, you know, I, I realize that we're all busy in, in the electronic age. There's other things going on, but... Uh, uh, I believe so strongly in, in social tourism, sports tourism, all of those things. And if we don't have younger people to drive that bus, it's just not going to happen. 
And, and just to comment on, on Councillor Paulson's comment is I have started the engagement process with looking at approaching community about our capacity for uh, hosting those, those type of events, whether it be provincial, uh, national, international. And, and I think that this is where this Canada Day event again sort of sparks that discussion again to talk about where is the capacity in our community and who needs to be involved to ensure that the uh, perennial events like Canada Day celebrations continue forward and we can review if, if Port Alberni is in the spot where we do want to continue to, to host events or if we need a bit of a break or, or where the feel is from community. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, Councillor McClellan, sorry. Yeah, I, I, and I think Councillor Polson's kind of hit a lot of it on the head with uh, people, you know, getting older and doing other things. But I do remember when the Folk Fest Society got started with multiculturalism, when Winston Joseph did a was the big push behind it. There was a lot of events, uh, opera groups brought into town, uh, cultural. Uh, different cultures brought in their folk singers and so on. It was, it was quite a big deal. So maybe there is a group that is into multiculturalism, which is what we keep hearing Canada is, and uh, would like to take it on and, and perform on some of those things, because they were, it was a good thing. Yeah. Well, let's hope. Best of uh, luck with your deliberations. Okay, Council. Uh, Last item under this is uh, a letter uh, d dated December 3rd from uh, Ernest Burnett regarding condition of the highway leading into Port Alberni and uh, requesting a council appoint a, a new highway committee. Uh, and uh, Councillor McLemon, uh, do you want to move receipt of that letter? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd move a receipt uh, of Mr. Burnett's letter and uh, thank him very much for his concern. Okay. And if there's a seconder. Is there a seconder? I'll second it. Yeah, just I didn't see him out. We were trying to get the highway last year before we got told no. So let's hope we can maybe get another kick at it with the new highways minister. Well, the uh, highway coming in is really in the jurisdiction of the ACRD in any case. Yeah. Okay. Um, on re on this motion, all those in favor? Carried. And. City Clerk, uh, we have some informational correspondence. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, a few items. A uh, certificate from the Port Alberni Toy Run to recognize the city's contributions and outstanding support. A newsletter from Habitat for Humanity providing information on recent accomplishments in the mid-Vancouver Island area. Information regarding nominations for the BC Community Achievement Awards. Nomination deadline is January the 15th. Pete Milliken provides a letter regarding surveillance, vandalism and bike lanes. Peter Bolton has provided a copy of an email um, regarding the effects of electromagnetic radiation and radio frequency radiation. And lastly, Fur Park Village Echo Village Foundation advises of the projects they have completed during the year and encouraging um, contributions. Okay, uh, Councillor uh, Alamany, do you want to move a receipt and file of those? Move that informational correspondence. Items numbered one through six be received and filed. Second that, Mr. Mayor. Anybody wish to pull anything out? Councillor McClemon? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a comment, I guess. Habitat for Humanity telling us what they do in the Mid-Island. They, they were here and left, and even after the City Council gave them some property or got some property arranged so they could build a house on it. But maybe they'll come back one day. I was just thinking I read Pete Milligan's uh, letter and possibly a good idea to just thank him for sending that letter. He took the time to actually handwrite it and not email it or anything. So that's probably something. And it's quite, on, on number five, I just have a question here. We get a lot of these kind of letters about radio frequencies and so on. And, and I, I'm just wondering if that's something that the Climate Destruction Committee or could maybe look at and see if there is anything there. I, I don't think there is, but uh, you know, they got to do something. Well, it is being sent to every uh, council in the province. Well, we could direct it to them. All right. Council can do that. All right. We would be happy. And I, I happen to know that the city clerk does respond to each one of these letters. Okay. On the motion, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And council, um, we, oops, there are no proclamations, but we do have a report from in camera. 
and that is that at the no November 27th uh, meeting, we reappointed Ken McRae as the city's representative to the board of the Port Alberni Port Authority for a three-year term effective July 1st, 2018. Uh, brings us to council reports. The uh, first report is mine, and I'd like to report that uh, November 30th, I met with students at the uh, VAS Center, uh, or the 8th Avenue Learning Center, um, at, to talk about uh, future Port Alberni and the economic sectors that we're working on, and things that they needed to consider as students uh, in order to be uh, successful in the workforce, and uh, the future economy here in the Alberni Valley. Uh, I also, on November 30th, attended the the uh, house at AGM uh, that was held here in Port Alberni. It was uh, great to go there, and they were appreciative that I showed up. Uh, I also attended that afternoon uh, a rally at the uh, uh, in front of the SOMAS Mill site, uh, basically calling on the Western Forest Products to either uh, reinvest in that site and open it up and help it become what it could become, uh, which would be a site for hundreds of uh, additional jobs in the valley, or else sell it to a, to a firm that is willing to do that. Uh, and attended uh, a presentation uh, by Sean Loney at ECHO. December the 3rd, uh, went and attended the, uh, the Citizens on Patrol uh, thank you dinner, Christmas dinner. It was a great event. Uh, and uh, thank you to all the people that are involved in that, uh, particularly Councillor Sove, who's uh, on his own time, um, actually represents us and uh, is a great connection for us on the on Citizens on Patrol. Don't know that you ever actually get any sleep, uh, Councillor Sove, but thank you for doing that. Um, December 7th to 8th, uh, I was in Richmond for a CEO forum. Um, and uh, I have the book, if anybody's interested in doing it. It's, uh, it's the eighth annual elected official forum, uh, year four strate strategies um, for elected officials, for mayors and uh, chairs of, uh, of uh, regional districts. Uh, December the 8th. Uh, I attended a corporate Christmas party uh, in Surrey for the Sand Group. Um, December 10th, I was at the uh, the first uh, breakfast with Santa at McLean's Mill. It's great to do that. Um, but I do bring a request in that if, if a council or anybody who's listening has unused uh, Christmas lights or Christmas decorations that would be appropriate for out of doors, McLean's Mill Society would really like to have them. And uh, so when you get to the end of the Christmas season, if you've got something that you don't want to use, uh, they're looking to really expand their decorations for future years. And this afternoon, I attended, on behalf of Council, the West Coast General Hospital Auxiliary's Christmas Tea. And I'm happy to report that the West Coast General Hospital donated, uh, Auxiliary donated $150,000 to the hospital today to be used to purchase equipment. $150,000, that's a lot of money. Uh, so that's my report. I move uh, acceptance of my report. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. And Councilor McClemon from the Regional District. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the uh, last meeting was on November 22nd. And uh, I guess the main three things that we who took up uh, most of the agenda, I guess, was the Cleekhoot Marina again. There was a lot of conversation about how that should be. A bit about the uh, Sprout Lake and the uh, Sprout River um, exits with the flooding and so on. And there was a cost update on the uh, Alberni Valley Airport, which we've already discussed and voted our share on. And there was quite a large report from the Island Corridor Foundation uh, talking a lot about their trails and so on and and uh, just reviewing it uh, today again and notice a lot of the, the trails that they they did along the island corridor from uh, Lake Cowichan and those areas uh, which took in the forest industry and so on and so forth so and that that concludes my report mr. mayor for for the ACRD for this trial 
Okay, I move uh, acceptance of your report. I move acceptance, I'm sorry. And I'll second it. All in favor? Carried. And that brings us then to Councillor's reports and we'll start with Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, November 29th, fundraiser for the Kiwanis Hilton Children's Centre. Uh, went in uh, for a burger and a beer and uh, had the opportunity to present them with an extra $3,000 check from the Kiwanis to, uh, to help out at, uh, at the Children's Centre. Uh, December 3rd, uh, spent the day with the Vancouver, and I Vancouver Island Industrial Heritage Society on the Santa train, helping out there. I put a long day in. They took five runs out with Santa, so uh, a good day and a lot of happy little kids. Um, December 6th, uh, acting mayor at the Heritage Commission Awards night and meeting. Um, recognized Ken McRae and Ken Whiteman as Freeman of the City. And the awards we're giving out, and uh, at the end we did a, or the commission uh, did a tribute to Christy Dobson, along with the, there'll be a photo of Christy in the uh, in the uh, museum for all the work she did for the Heritage Commission and for the museum, and uh, that's my report, sir. Thank you, and Councillor Alamani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, main highlights, I guess, was the uh, the Sean Lonely. Uh, presentation there a couple weeks back um, probably one of the best attended public uh, speaker events I think I've ever I've ever seen in the valley um, generated lots of discussion um, and uh, uh, you know explanations of what social proc procurement is um, but uh, hopefully more can come of that um, and then for council business uh, air quality council we had on Thursday um, we, uh, it was quite a full agenda. We have a new coordinator, Anna Lewis, uh, who comes f to us from, uh, from the ACRD already. She's, uh, she's the agricultural, um, she's working on the agricultural committee. Um, but her husband is also, uh, in the air quality field. So she's, uh, she's, uh, very engaged and, um, she'll be working with the, uh, with the rest of the committee on that. Uh, we talked a lot about, um, uh, a new opportunity from Vancouver Island University. Um, uh, there's a, a quite state-of-the-art um, system that they're putting together and uh, looking to do, uh, they call it volatile organic uh, compound testing, but what that means is uh, uh, things that you can smell um, and, uh, and other interesting things that uh, we'll be able to sniff out in our community and uh, and sort of get uh, leading edge information. That's uh, the only thi only uh, only thing like it in the uh, in the country. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, we had some information about the Woodstove Exchange program. Some changes there. Um, we have good uptake again this year, uh, and uh, we have more vouchers coming for people to uh, upgrade their wood stoves. Uh, but the province is also putting out v vouchers. Uh, to have people move from non-compliant wood stoves to some other heating source, so uh, natural gas or heat pump or uh, something else. So, uh, so that's a new program from the province, which should be good. Um, and then uh, we had a little bit of an update from uh, the, for the canned timber file, um, mainly that it hasn't hasn't gone anywhere uh, in the past little while. There, uh, uh, they have move towards completing some of the recommendations from the Golder Report, but we don't have uh, much more information on that and we're uh, basically waiting to see uh, what their next uh, move is for that. Um, lastly, uh, Earl Plain uh, mentioned that, uh, uh, of course, they came to council last meeting um, as part of the Ministry of Environment. Um, because Port Alberni is in uh, is in the red zone as far as air quality is concerned, uh, and that means that we have uh, funding opportunities to assist us with air shed planning. So uh, the uh, Air Quality Council is going to look at uh, leveraging that to uh, come up with an air shed management plan. Um, so that's the Air Quality Council. Uh, the Food Se Security Climate Disruption Committee met just after that, um, and uh, our main uh topic was uh actually interfacing with our new communications director uh alicia Husup, and um 
we uh, talked over our uh, upcoming annual report that we'll be submitting to council hopefully very early in the new year um, with our uh, recommendations and that's all for me thank you um, council uh, unfortunately councillor minions had to uh, leave early she wasn't feeling very well uh, so councillor paulson pretty short uh, report from my side uh, attended a couple of uh, society agms chaired the um, um, Port Alberni Junior Hockey Society and the general meeting. And short of that, I would like to really wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a uh, Happy New Year, uh, Council, and uh, for everybody in the audience, press, staff, Merry Christmas. I know we're meeting again, but it's a shot at you guys. So Merry Christmas and to everybody in the Alberni Valley. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sobe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on the 28th of November, on behalf of the city, I attended the uh, Charles Landing, the premiere of Witness, which is a uh, city-sponsored um, production for uh, victims of crimes, explaining the judicial uh, process. So that was very well attended. A, on the 30th of November, uh, I was with you, Mr. Mayor, at the rally at the Somas Mill site. Uh, it was nice to see the steel workers taking initiative of uh, having the talks and inviting all the unions there uh, to speak. Uh, on the 3rd of December, uh, community policing had their volunteers dinner and uh, that was uh, a great event and thank you again for all the volunteers. These are people on citizen patrols, speed watch, uh, lock it or lose it and uh, also crime stoppers uh, attending the event. Uh, on the 4th of December, organizational meeting, and of course we had our public hearing on the 5th, and that's my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor McClellan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I too attended the rally, hopefully that the Solmas Mill could be restarted and hopefully sold to someone who really wants to operate it. And uh, I spent a fair bit of time just kind of looking around, following up on the motion I made on the uh, uh, Harborview Apartments, and I noticed that shortly after that, there a lot of cleanup did take place, although I'm sure there's still lots of problems there. It uh, was interesting. And I've uh, since then talked to the uh, bylaw inspector, uh, the bylaw officer, and uh, uh, given him one other address, and I went around to write some numbers down today, and there'll be several more I'm going to give him and that we can maybe mention at least as an example at the uh, Committee of the Whole, I was going to call the public hearing, ain't that? And just one other comment, I, I just was wondering, is it possible for the city to um, put an ad or something in the paper to, or in the, no, I don't have a paper much, but uh, in, on the radio to invite the businesses particularly to come to the uh, Committee of the Whole? And you can answer that later because I'll, I'll make a motion to accept all these wonderful reports, but I do have one other announcement to make. I got a new grandson an hour or so ago, and so there, in Australia. Hey, congratulations. Uh, is there a seconder for the motion? All in favor? Carried. Do we have a name for this grandson yet? Jack? I think it's Rhett. R-H-E-T-T. -T. Okay. It must be Australian. Thank you. I hope, I just read something. I, I'm not sure it's right. Uh, council, uh, doesn't appear to be any new business. Uh, question period and then yes uh, it is our this is our last regular council meeting of 2017 we do have the committee on the whole next week but uh, merry christmas to everybody and uh, happy new year so a motion to adjourn so moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. all in favor carry it thank you very much everybody <laughs>